Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Pam's Treasures. Uh, today I want to do a quick little show and tell of some of the art quilts that I've done um, in the last couple of years. I uh, just thought maybe it might be fun for some people who are quilters to um, see what I do. So, we're going to start off with number one. Um, actually, I have two. And it's... Uh, I had a class that I did on mosaics, and it's basically you just take your fabric and cut it up into little pieces and then put it back together. And so I did two leaves. This is one. Bring it in close so you can see. So what I did is I quilted the background and then I uh, fused with fusible web the green strips onto the black background and then I stitched around each one and then I added some beads down the center and then on the back I did what they call a corner sleeve where you could add a little dowel rod um, if I have anything, oh, maybe I can explain it with this. Uh, of course, it's not long enough, but you would run a little dowel rod through there to hang it on. So that's that's the first one. And then this one, when I did it, I decided to um, leave the leaf solid down the middle. It's the only difference from the first one. And And then I added get it to focus here come on focus thank you thank you but anyways um added the leaves or the beads to the leaf okay the next one i did i wanted to do um a vase oh and by the way the, on the first two my my binding instead of doing a regular quilt binding i used gimp uh, like upholstery gimp. Let's see if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it there. And it was it was just great. It was a big time saver. So the next one I did was of a vase, and after I quilted the background and added my mosaic vase, I decided to I wanted a little three dimensional, and so I added some beads. So that's that one. Let me back up a little bit. There we go. So you can see the whole thing. And then I'll come in so you can see the beads are three-dimensional. And on this one I used like a, a burgundy gimping. And then again on the back I put the little pocket, corner pocket uh, hanging sleeve on them. So we had a lot of fun in this class. Um, each one, each each person's uh, mosaic that they did was totally unique. Uh, there's a lot you can do with that. <clears throat> this one was the first art quilt that I did. Oh, it's been several years ago. Um, I had never done anything like this before. I was a traditional quilter. And so we went, we all brought fabrics and trims and just all kinds of stuff. And we just sat down and started putting it all together. So this is mine. <laughs> now, up in the corner here, there's um, some black, black and silver. Um, oh, gosh. What kind of fabric would you call that? Something you would make probably a blouse or something out of. And then I added um, black lace. And I had these little buttons that looked like little French or Spanish dancing shoes. And then I found this piece of fabric that I was black and silver. And I just kind of draped it so there's some texture to it as you can see. And down in the corner, I have some silver satin. And then I found, uh, I went upstairs and I found one of my hair combs. And I had a broken clip-on earring that I added to the comb. 
and then a friend of mine had this red um, fringe that has it actually has little beads in it. Let's see if you can get up so you can see here. There's little little beads on the trim. So on the back, I said, and I'm going to have to put my glasses on, sorry. <laughs> I named this one Dance. Get my pull fingers. I said, I've always admired the Spanish flamenco dancers, twirling black lace and rich fabrics, clicking their castanets and the tapping of their shoes to create a, um, a flowing... Oh my goodness. Bear with me. I can't read my own writing. <laughs> to create a flowing a rhythmic dance and celebration. Although I will probably never be a flamenco dancer, I know that God graces each of us with our own unique dance in life that only we can do. So I celebrate the dance that God has given to me. And I actually did this in 2012. Wow! So seven years ago, that's where my art quilt um, journey started. Now, I made a, a big quilt. I, I did a lot of, uh, there's a lady locally who has classes on teaching you how to hand dye your own fabrics. And I made a big quilt, and I had all these little scraps left over, and I'm like, I cannot waste these. I have to save them and use them on something. So one night I just got all my little scraps out and I just started sewing them together as I was watching TV. I really, I wasn't even paying attention to what I was doing. And then, you know, as, as it, it grew and it grew and I started looking at the colors and when I got done, I was like, oh my goodness. I go, I have my own Leaning Tower of Pisa. Now, if, <laughs> to some people you might go, are you kidding me? Okay. But this does look like the Leaning Tower of Pisa in an abstract way. And um, so that's my Leaning Tower of Pizza. And Pisa, not pizza, like Friday night pizza. And then I put a little hanging sleeve on the back. This one I did, um, I, I just hand dyed a piece of pink fabric. And the, the quilting pattern, one of my patterns on my quilting machine, is called Shoshiko, uh, which is a Japanese um, pattern. And so I quilted it, and then I added beads to it. So, let's see if I can back up here so you can see the whole thing. And then I'll come in, so you can see the pattern, the quilting pattern. Okay, so pretty. I really, really like this one. And then down at the bottom I did some little dangles with um, some glass beads and um, um, abalone shell. And then again at the top on the back has a little hanging sleeve. This one, we did a challenge at our quilt guild, and we wanted uh, black and white and a pop of color. And at the time, I was so busy doing customer quilts, I didn't have time to do a really big quilt. And at the last minute, I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? And so I found the black and white fabrics, and I had a piece of hand-dyed, kind of a peachy pink color. And I thought, well, I'll add that in. And I did kind of an abstract pattern. But I had a piece in the middle, and I'm like, okay, what am I going to put there? And I started looking at the black and the white and the pink. And for, don't ask me why, but for some reason, the Pink Panther theme started popping in my head. So I went online, and I found a picture of the Pink Panther, and I printed it onto the center square of fabric, and then I kind of shaded it in. So, this is my black and white and pop of color. <laughs> and there's my Pink Panther. Don't you just love him? He's so cool. So, I, I really like this. This is one of my favorite quilts I ever did. 
The next one is called um, Strata, S-T-R-A-T-A -A quilt. And it's basically just strips of fabric that you add together. Um, you can do whatever you want as far as colors or prints. And then you go back and you add beading, buttons, whatever, whatever makes you happy. And so this is mine. Now this one's kind of long, so I'm going to have to, you're going to have to bear with me here so I can show you the whole thing. And then I will come in a little closer so you can see the beading. There. There's some buttons. I thought those were so cute, little flower buttons. I found those and put little round buttons in there. There's that fabric. More buttons. As my little niece Alexis would say, buttons. <laughs> When she was little. She's not little anymore. She's a grown-up grown up lady now. Okay. But all the colors really really came together good. And uh, just um, very simple, but yet very colorful and abstract. Ooh, this next one. <sighs> I bought this piece of black and white fabric. And I started looking at it, and that's when the, what they called Zentangling first came out. And Zentangling is basically, when I was young, we called it doodling. You would take, take a piece of paper and you would just kind of doodle a figure on it, and then you would fill it in, you know, with different lines and circles or whatever came to your mind. Well, when I saw this black and white fabric, that's the first thing I thought of was, I'm, I, this is like doodling to me. And so I took out all of my fabric markers and I started coloring. And now we have adult coloring books, which is the same thing as what I did here on this fabric. And then I added it to black. And then the orange that I'm going to show you is actually a piece of batting that I hand dyed. And then the background piece is a purple, a really nice purple fabric. So here it is. Now, what I did was, like I said, there's the batting that I hand dyed. And there's the black. But this is all, this was a piece of black and white fabric. And I sat and I hand colored all of it in with these beautiful, bright colors. So this is my, I'm going to call this one my Picasso. <laughs> And I was so thrilled because I went back to get more of this fabric and it was gone. And about a month later I went back in and they had like five yards of it. And I just, I got it all. I got it all because I thought eventually I'm going to do some more with this. Now this piece, um, again, it's the Zentangling. It was, I did some classes on this one too. Where you just take... Um, a piece of quilted, a, a quilted design, and I did this just on regular muslin, and then I took my black fabric markers and I just doodled all in all over this. So it's entangled, whatever you want to call it. So this is what the fabric. This is blue on the back, but it was cream color on the front. But that's your quilting pattern, okay? And then this is what it turned into. So you can see the whole thing first. And then we come forward and you can see all the... And this is one of the, probably one of the most relaxing... I, I know it looks complicated, but it's not. You just start doing... You just start drawing. And it's amazing that all the different little patterns that you can come up with. And um, I've had several ladies when they stop in my shop and they're like... Oh, where did you get that fabric? And I'm going, well, it's not really fabric. It's where I've colored it in uh, with fabric markers. And uh, so they, they all ask, they go, well, can you do a class on this? And I'm like, sure. You know, so we had a great time, great time with this class. And then, of course, I did the sleeve 
on the back of that one. Now this one, um, I had a bunch of little, I don't throw any scraps away. I, I save, if it's a one inch square of fabric, I'll save it. Because you never know. And so I had all these pieces left over. And one night I just started randomly sewing things together. And I got all done. And my husband's like, okay, what are you going to do with all that? And I said, I have no idea. I said, but I want to make something out of it. And so I started looking at it. And he goes, well, it looks like stained glass to me. And so I, I thought, wait a minute. I've got this piece of brown fabric that I bought years ago that looks like stones okay and so i started cutting and adding these pieces of this strip fabric that i put together and i ended up with a stained glass window now i have not quilted this yet and i don't know that i'm going to i might just frame it but this is what it turned out looking like and you can see yes there's still frayed thread around the edges <laughs> let me bring it in and show it to you here So it's just random strips of just all different colors, which is what our world is all about. You know, it's like you don't have to have perfectly matched colors. All colors go together. I just, I was so thrilled how that came out. And there's the bottom of the window. So someday I'm going to put this, if I find the right frame, I will frame this into, just make it a, a Something to hang on the wall. Like my own stained glass window. Now this one, um, for those of you who do make quilts, and you add your binding, you always have a little bit of binding left over. Well, somehow I always end up with a lot left over. And I have bags and bags and bags. So one night, I sat down and I thought, i got to do something with all this binding. So I got out and I started sewing strips together and made some squares. And then I sewed the squares together and I'm like, this is this will make a nice table topper, okay? So, this is it. Now if you'll see when I bring it up close, I did not unfold my binding strips. They are still folded. And what I did was, let's see if I can find one that's got the top here. We'll go here. Okay. There's a piece of muslin that I cut out, a square of muslin. And then I just started adding these strips on to the muslin. And then once I got all my squares done, I turned them, you know, different directions. But I really like this black and white, how it just kind of zigzagged down through. So I sewed all those together, and then I did what they call an old-fashioned, oh, what did they call it? Um, there's a name for it, kind of like blank, something blanket. But anyways, what you do is, is do right sides together, and stitch it all the way around, and then flip it right side out, and then just do a real thin stitch around the edges. And I did not even put batting in this because of all these strips. It was so thick. And so there's my, that's my table topper made out of my leftover binding strips. Really liked it. Um, this is another class that I did a few years back where I actually quilted. Um, I did some butterflies. I did some pumpkins. Um, and for our class, you know, each one told me what they would like to have. But I quilted the fabric, and then we used Jacquard Lumiere fabric paints. And the Jacquard Lumiere paints are, they have some metallic in them. And you can either use them full strength, or you can kind of add water to them. So it gives you just a, a, a soft hint of color. So this is what... This this is a pumpkin one, and this is what it looked like when I quilted it. It's a really pretty, pretty pattern. It reminds me of Cinderella. But once it was painted, this is how it looks. Bring it a little closer so you can see. It's just a nice, 
see a little bit of the shimmer. You know, cameras are never as good as the as the regular eye. But um, anyways, so that's another one that we did. We got a couple more here. Um, one class that we did, um, it was a <laughs> I called it. I have this thing about the Wizard of Oz and Alice in Wonderland. But this one, I ended up calling the pattern Down Rabbit's Hole. So, you know, when in Alice in Wonderland, how the rabbit goes running and Alice starts chasing him and she ends up falling down the rabbit's hole into uh, the, the land where the uh, Mad Hatter and everyone was. So what I did was I took a block and put in the middle that was kind of abstract. It was not like just a square, kind of angled it. And then I just started adding strips of fabric around it and kept going around and going around until I got to the outer border. And then I squared that up to make it a block. And then the piece in the middle is actually an earring. And when you see how huge this thing is, it's amazing. So first of all, this is the whole wall hanging. And... Can see I just used scrap fabric again nothing nothing really matched but will you look at the size of that earring let's see if I can get my hand in there so you can see how big it is that is a humongous humongous earring <laughs> but it was perfect for the center of that block and so I was I was tickled to be able to find that one and then of course it has the hanging sleeve on the back. So that's down rabbit hole. And my last one, uh, when I showed you the pumpkin, um, that one was the, the paint had been watered down so I gave it just a subtle um, print, uh, finish. This one I did, uh, we had a challenge at Guild of all things fly and you know, of course, I mean, you could do birds or bees or whatever you wanted. Well, of course, I wanted to do my butterfly because I had a butterfly pattern. So I quilted it, and then I went back and I hand-painted it. So it's kind of hard to see on the back, but the pattern is there. But anyways, this time I used the Jacquard Lumiere paints full strength. And I just wanted to show you the difference. If I can lean back far enough so you can see the, most of it anyway. This is so, so pretty. And that's when you really see the shimmer of the paints. There's butterflies down the side. And then there's the giant butterfly in the middle. So, so pretty. Butterflies at the bottom. And then I used little, if you can see them, I did little white dots, which in in real life, it kind of gives you that little highlight of light here and there that um, really, really enhanced it a lot. So that's my big butterfly one there. So that's it for my miniature quilts for now. Um, I'm sure I will have more in the future. And... Um, I just appreciate you stopping by. I thank you for the encouragement that you've all given me and, and the, the wonderful comments that I get on my videos. And uh, I, just, I just love everybody. You guys have been great to me. And I hope that, um, that more will join. So if you haven't joined yet, please subscribe. Hit the notification bell. I hope that you'll give me a like. Thumbs up. And um, I will... Uh, be doing some more different things in the future and uh, gosh you know it's just if you really stop and think there's so many things that you can do with your hands that God has given you the talent to do and not everybody has the same gift but we all are gifted and uh, so I, I just appreciate all of you thank you so much love you and I will see you soon bye